Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of our Sunday Mass. We're social distanced quite a bit, so I'll take the, my mask off here in the sanctuary. I welcome you to the Immaculate Conception Parish of Park Perry, Canada, on this great solemnity, Corpus Christi, the body and the blood of Christ. We welcome you, and now our gathering hymn. Amen. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us now give praise to our God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may ever experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now the word of God on the solemnity. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ came as a high priest of good things that had come. He passed through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. He entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself with a blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason, Christ is the mediator of the new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, because the death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eucharistic procession. 
that here in Fort Perry, we will carry the Blessed Sacrament from the church all the way down to Lake Simcoe. Lake Simcoe, not that far. Lake Scugog. <laughs> uh, maybe not from Scugog to the church, because that's uphill all the way. It's easier to go down. So I'm certainly hoping next year we will carry the Blessed Sacrament showing that Jesus is here and we are here in Port Perry and in Sudan. I guess this is why, of course, naturally, I thought of preaching this day on this great gift, this great gift of Holy Communion, the body and the blood of Christ. I'm sure perhaps in your life, I know this happened to me, that there are some moments when we stop and we realize. We stop and we realize in our depths this great gift to receive Holy Communion. That Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, but then he left us this gift. Not bread and wine, but in the words of today's gospel, the promise of today's gospel, his body and the blood. And we're so honored to participate in our masses and in our communions, digitally or when appropriate in person, and to receive certainly our spiritual communion prayer but to receive Holy Communion. And I must admit, all this week in getting ready for today, the solemnity of Corpus Christi, I thought of my 33 years as a priest in all the places where I've had the great opportunity to celebrate Mass with many of you, indeed, who are joining us through our gift of technology. That I've had the great honor of celebrating Mass in the Vatican on the tomb of St. John Paul II, in Assisi, at the tomb of St. Francis, in Jerusalem, in the Holy Sepulchre, and in this upper room, in this church of the Gospels, on the beaches, the Mass we had together on Juno Beach in France, that wonderful Mass at the seashore. All of these wonderful Masses, including on my mother's coffee table, the body and blood of Jesus, Holy Communion, the Blessed Sacrament. From the table of the Last Supper, from the Last Supper, this great gift from the last But also, brothers and sisters, with the events here in Canada this past week in Cameroon, and the discovery of 215 children's bodies, the pain, the anger, the sadness, the soul, to the hearts of so many this past week. I thought of the other reality of the last summer. I thought of the other gift of the last summer. The washing of feet. The washing of feet. As most of you know, on Holy Thursday, on Holy Thursday of Holy Week, we do not use this gospel. We always use the gospel in all our churches, St. John's Gospel, the washing of the feet. And if appropriate, the pastor at the Holy Thursday Mass removes his morning outer garment. The pastor kneels on the floor. He washes the parishioners' feet. The washing of the feet at the Last Supper. The washing of the feet at our Catholic Mass. A real presence of the servant of Jesus. There at the Last Supper, here at Mass. 
to kneel as Jesus did, to bow one's head before another as Jesus did, to take the feet as Jesus did, to wash, to care, to heal, to reconcile, to love on a bended knee. This is the other truth of the last supper. And perhaps at this moment in the history of Canada, and maybe especially in the history of the Catholic Church in Canada, we come on this Corpus Christi 2021 with both parts of the last supper, both gifts of the last supper, the truth of receiving the body of Christ, the truth of taking the body of Christ, and the truth now in this moment of being the body of Christ. All of us servants on men that we, especially before these little girls and little boys of Catholics. Let us now profess our faith that binds all the baptized together as one family, as together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Before we bring bread and wine to the altar to be changed to the body and blood of Christ, we bring now our prayers, knowing they will be changed into answers from the Lord. For God's blessing upon the church, giving thanks for the gifts of Jesus' body and blood. May all who eat the bread of life be strengthened in faith and united in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask God to look, on, look with mercy on all who are hungry. May all nations work to feed the starving and remove the causes of poverty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocation to the priesthood, that God's people never be without the celebration of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we gather spiritually at the table of the Lord, let us pray for the marriage of Immaculate Conception, that this and every Eucharist may offer God's joyous worship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that we may be strengthened by the eternal gift of the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may see the Lord's face to face, and in that moment receive his mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions, and the intentions of the Church, and of this world, this holy day, that we now offer in silence. That God, through this holy mass, may hear and answer all of our 
prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life and love, we praise, we thank you for giving us a share in your divine life whenever we eat and drink of the body and blood of Christ. Deepen our love of the Mass each time we gather through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our offertory.
may we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we now are play. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. On this solemnity is recommended by the Church the first Eucharistic prayer, often called the Roman Canon. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth that hang on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered digitally before you, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health, and well-being, and pay their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memories we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, We ask that through their merits and their prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and count among the flock to which you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread <coughs> in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving him thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, in the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty, from the gifts you have given us, this your victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts may be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high to the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at your altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us, mark the sign of faith, who rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your sinner, your servant, who although are sinners, hope in your abundant mercy. Graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, but John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with them and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, graciously granting her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in this present age for our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We'll have our announcements for the sake of our parishioners, and then the final blessing and the recessional hymn. Go over here for the announcements. Again, you can see online our parish website, our parish bulletin. Please take note. To you may know this coming Friday is the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. All of June is dedicated to the Sacred Heart. We have flowers at our statue here in Africa. They came on Fridays in solemnity. Therefore, we will offer various consecrations to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. For our parish, this will occur Friday morning after our communion service. So Friday night, here we are encouraged to be consecrated to the Sacred Heart. Twelve noon, I shall be going down to Washington to our Catholic school board. And outside of the school board, with the head of our school board, we will consecrate to the Sacred Heart, Durham's Catholic school board. At 3 p.m., I will be at our parish school. I will be at Good Shepherd School with our principal outside, and at 3 p.m. offer for our school the consecration to the Sacred Heart. Certainly, if anyone in our prayer wants to join me, especially at our school at 3 o'clock, please do so. Depending on what the social distancing guidelines are, you may have to stay in your car at uh, that point. Then finally, of course, for our homes, I encourage you on the internet, there's many, many prayers of consecration of the Sacred Heart. We are going to be using the one that Jesus gave to St. Mark Rentonary. A follow-up for the First Nations events of this past week, uh, those who may have been driving by our church here in Fort Perry may have noticed a memorial of shoes. I know many of your churches, especially in Canada, many, many of these memorials of children's shoes that is happening here in our parish on the front steps. Our Cardinal has guided us if uh, such a memorial happens to please respect the Baptist for nine days. Nine days represents 215 hours, that is one hour for each of the children. I thank you for those who drop off some of these shoes here some of the middle of the night on your souls myself. Also, note that I have personally sent a note to Chief Kelly Maraca. Chief Maraca is the chief of the Mississauga, in Mississaugas of Scuba Island, which is part of our parish. I reached out to Chief Baraka of the island of the island, and we'll certainly see what may come of this reconciliation, prayers, and action. And yes, we will indeed continue with our prayers and our actions, and ask for many intercessions, including St. Catherine to keep the law. May God bless you all who have joined us in this incredible, beautiful solemnity of the body and the blood of Christ. And yes, next year we will walk. We will not to like Sinkhole. Some of you young people, you can walk to like Sinkhole. I don't want to like Sinkhole. P.S. There's all sorts of importance now that you like Sinkhole. God bless you. Great Sinkhole. Be safe.
grace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And now our recession. 